Hi everyone. Today I want to talk about The Book of Love by Kelly Link. This is a February 2024 release. I'm hoping to review a lot of 2024 releases this year and this is one that I was very highly anticipating. My ARC copy comes in at 615 pages. It is quite the commitment of a book so hopefully my review will help you decide whether or not you're willing to make that commitment. This is the story of a group of teenagers who are dead. They somehow escape death and end up at their high school. Um, and their music teacher reveals to them that they have several tasks they need to complete within a certain limited amount of time in order to fully come back to life. They don't know how they died, they don't know why they died, they don't know how they escaped, and only three of them are from this town. There is a mysterious fourth person with them whom they don't recognize, no one really knows who they are, but they are also tasked with the same thing and are thrust back into this town, even though clearly they do not belong there. So based on that premise, you'd think it'd be a pretty plotty adventure story. That's not the case. I'm honestly a little bit perplexed about what this book is. I don't want to bury the lead. I did not particularly care for The Book of Love, and I was really surprised by that. I have read Kelly Link in the past. She is a very well-known short story writer. She's won many prizes for her short stories. She predominantly writes adult short stories and this to me while it is packaged and marketed as an adult novel feels much more YA in terms of its characters and in terms of its complexity. So there's a lot going on but I don't feel like much of it is executed very well and that's not a dig on YA at all but it just doesn't have the nuance or the depth or the complexity that I expect from a Kelly Link story and that I expect from an adult novel. We're also following characters who are theoretically in college, but they act to me much younger than that. Um, I think that if you told me that all these characters were 14, 15, I would believe you. Uh, I think it's just the fact that they are doing drugs and having sex, maybe they bumped the age up a little bit, but I find it very telling that this book is blurbed by Cassandra Clare. Um, and Kelly Link is also very open about the fact that she has worked with authors such as Holly Black and Lee Bardugo, who are very prominent YA writers who have also written adult novels, but are, I think, best known for YA. And if they were giving her writing advice and coaching her, I think that they maybe coached her more in the YA direction. I also watched an interview with Kelly Link in which she said that originally this was going to be a trilogy and it was condensed into a singular novel. And I feel like that that was a mistake because while it is quite long, I think that it's doing so much that often it feels rushed and I, I felt very confused. <laughs> for a lot of the book. I think one of the issues is we're following a lot of different characters. We're following Laura, who is one of the girls who died. She is in a band with her sister, who is named Susanna, who was in love with Daniel, uh, who was also in their band and also died. And then there was another character who was friends with Susanna named Mo. He also was one of the people who died. You also follow their families. You follow the music teacher. You follow a couple of, of magical characters. I mean, if, if them having died and escaping death didn't tell you magic, this book is a fantasy novel. But it, I don't feel like it does those fantasy elements much justice either. I never really understood the magic system. The stakes were, I was told, were extremely high and they seemed extremely high, but everything always seemed to kind of work out for the most part. Um, there are character deaths that feel very unearned and unconsequential. So yeah, one of my issues is its length because it's too long and too short. It either needed to be edited to the point where it was more palatable or expanded into a trilogy where some of these ideas and especially the characters could have been explored more. Because if I'm struggling to remember who Susanna and who Laura are, even though they have very different plots and theoretically different personalities, that's not a great sign. And we get different chapter perspectives from all of these different characters, so I wish that there had been more narrative distinction between them, because if they had different voices, the writing changed. I would have been able to tell them apart a lot better, and I just, I wasn't able to really, to really do that because it all felt very one note in terms of the writing. And some of the writing I did find to be extremely well executed, but those moments were few and far between. My favorite part of the novel is actually a single chapter in this book from the perspective of Moe's grandmother, who is a famous romance novelist. And there's definitely a clear love of romance novels in here. Um, 
not only in having a character who was a famous romance novelist, but diving into her, what she wrote and the, her characters and what it's like to be a romance writer. And there's also a lot of romance between these characters. And so I do think that Kelly Link would actually write a really great romance novel. And I'm wondering why she didn't do that. But anyway, the grandmother has a chapter in here from her perspective. From what I recall, it's the only chapter from her perspective because she is dead throughout the novel. So it's not like, this is not her ghost talking or anything like that. It's just a chapter that's from her perspective and I found it to be quite stunning. And I think one of the reasons why that chapter in particular resonated with me was that it was distinct narratively. It was written in more of a stream of consciousness like style. And I do wonder if it was maybe from the perspective of the moment that she was dying or had just died because it's very fluid with its perspective in time and what it's really addressing. And it does have this like stream of consciousness style to it that I thought was actually quite breathtaking. Um, but it happens on page 72. It never happens again for another like 500 pages. So that was a little bit disappointing because when we got to that section, we, I mean me, when I got to that section, I was stunned. I was like, this is what I'm wanting. This is what I'm looking for. I hope the rest of the book is like this. And unfortunately it wasn't. But if that was a short story somehow in isolation, I just thought that that was quite beautiful and quite stunning. Um, as a piece of work. I think one of the issues with this book for me as well is the fact that it reminded me of a lot of other books um, and I just couldn't help but keep making connections between things not only from the YA I've read. For instance it did remind me in some ways not narratively or plot wise but of the Curse Worker series by Holly Black but also it gave me a lot of echoes of early Neil Gaiman um, and just sort of the the matter of factness with which Neil Gaiman does fantasy sometimes the characters in in his books and this is a, a trope of speculative fiction but they just kind of go along with what's happening i'm thinking like american gods the protagonist's shadow is confronted with gods are real and you're involved in this battle and there's just sort of a, an acceptance to this there's not ever like a questioning of, of reality there's not ever a, a fighting back uh against what seems impossible there's just this sort of subdued acceptance that feels very dreamlike to me um and i think that's another word i would use to describe this is it's extremely dreamlike i feel like everyone in this book operates on dream logic where you just sort of expect accept that what is happening is reality there's nothing you can do about it you gotta move forward and i just don't feel like that's pe how people deal with with things um i think that when strange things happen there is a reaction it, i think that's pretty human to respond to stimuli and say hey this is weird or is this actually happening or how do we prevent this what are we going to do about it rather than just saying okay <laughs> i don't know um to me that's how people act in dreams at least my dreams where you don't really question stuff you just go along with it for some reason you're back in college but you're still your own age and you're just like this is fine um it was very much like that and i feel like that's a little bit how neil gaiman especially his earlier works like neverwhere like american gods felt to me when i read them um but this also gave me strong boy and the heron vibes i don't know if you've seen that movie it's miyazaki's most recent film but i had a lot of issues with that film i didn't particularly care for it and one of the things i struggled with the most is I guess mild spoilers for the boy and the heron but there's this moment where the world really expands it becomes clear that there are multiple universes there are multiple timelines all crossing over each other and there's an old man who's been kind of controlling everything and holding everything in place and says to the protagonist like this is your job now um but there's so little explanation of what's been going on it's just like this weird fantasy thing pops out of nowhere with very little explanation um and it just feels so much larger and so much more complex than the space it is given in the text and that's how i felt with this book as well like i said there are a lot of stakes there are gods there's a power struggle um there's doomed love i just feel like it wasn't explained very well um and it felt very much like the boy in the hair and like uh okay i guess we're going in this direction now but you're not going to really explain it in a way that makes it make any sense at all um, and perhaps that's by design. But again, the characters don't respond in a way that makes sense. They're just sort of like, cool, let's go along with this power struggle. Let's go along with these gods. Oh, we have to kill this one god? Okay, let's do it. Um, and I just feel like we need to pause and say, wait a minute, <laughs> what? What's happening? How are we gonna do this? Why is this happening? It is a way of, I mean, 
learning that gods are real, learning that magic is real and that you can do magic would fundamentally change your understanding of life, of the world. And I think that just a blind acceptance to that is just not how normal people respond. Normal people don't respond well to things that are factual, that are real and well presented. So I just don't really feel like this is how people would respond to this type of, of huge situation. And the stakes felt so high, but again, it just all felt very dreamy. Um, and there were things about it that I did like that kept me going, that made me desperate for answers that I don't feel like we're ever really satisfied. So I struggled with this one. I don't feel like it's worth the pages. I don't feel like it's worth the time to struggle with it because I found it so narratively and character-wise so unsatisfying, um, which is really deeply disappointing because I have really enjoyed Kelly Link's short stories in the past and that perhaps this is for someone, but I'm not really sure what the project is. I think it's got a lot of uh, debut novel problems where it's dealing with a lot um, too many ideas in one package and none of them get enough time or space to breathe which I guess I maybe would have thought Kelly Link wouldn't have these issues because she's such a seasoned and experienced writer but she's a writer of short stories and when dealing with something that is so ambitious and so large I just don't think that it fits. I didn't like any of the characters. I didn't really understand any of the characters and therefore I didn't connect with the book. I wasn't rooting for anybody and you know I don't have to necessarily like a character to like a book but I have to understand their motivations, I have to understand where they're coming from, I have to believe them as characters and as people and I just fundamentally did not believe that any of this was really happening or even that consequential. It was like I was reading someone's weird dream. And sometimes if I'm struggling with characters the writing can really salvage a text but like I said it was also one note and indistinct from character to character that that did not save it either and obviously I felt like there were a lot of ma massive issues with the plot um, that I found to be bloated and confusing. So I did not like The Book of Love. If I had to think of people that I would recommend it to I'd say people who like Cassandra Clare, who like Leigh Bardugo, and who like Holly Black. I did not finish Holly Black's adult novel. Uh, I did not. I, I thought it was, it was pretty poorly executed. Um, I have enjoyed Holly Black's YA fiction in the past though. Then I haven't read Cassandra Clare or Lee Bardugo, but knowing that these are her writer friends, that they were her mentors in putting this novel together and, and making this novel come to fruition, I, I assume that people who like those particular styles would also like this. But for a reader of literary fiction who's excited for Kelly Link to write a novel, I would temper those expectations a little bit. I think that its lack of world building, its sloppiness with its lore and its own understanding of itself and its magic, I think that it would deeply frustrate a fantasy reader who has read someone who has a much stronger understanding and grasp and ability to convey um, meaning in magic and in magic systems and world building. I just don't think that's there. I think that if you like things that are really weird, really speculative and don't necessarily have a point um, and don't necessarily have a strong point of view, you might like this. <laughs> I don't know. I'm really struggling to think that I, of who I think would really enjoy this because I just didn't find much here to love. And I didn't mean that to be like a play on the title. <laughs> I'm sorry. Uh, but I just, I really struggled with this book and I, I wanted to find something in it to love, which is why I finished it. Um, but generally I, I would say give this one a pass. So I would, I'm desperate to know if you loved The Book of Love. Please let me know. I want to know what you loved about it. If you've read it at all, I'd love to hear your thoughts. And if you are intrigued by this book or turned away from it now based on what I've said, I would just love to hear from you down in the comments. Let's have a chat. Um, thank you so much for watching this video and I will see you in the next one.